All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live here in full effect. And guys, we got a phenomenal Canadian hip-hop duo right here live on the line, man. These guys are phenomenal. You know, I love when I interview individuals all over the world, but the one thing I love is giving back to my country of Canada. We got usual suspects right here live on the line representing Ontario. How are you guys doing this evening? Great, man. Bam, bam, bam. Respect, 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 man. I love it. And I got to say, first and foremost, guys, ever since MJ sent me your music, man, I've been digging it, man. I, I love the sound. You know what I mean? I love Canadian hip-hop, man. I love how guy, Canadian artists like yourselves always keep that real boom-bap hip-hop sound alive, man. So if you keep making that shit, we most definitely are going to keep spinning it. Ah, uh, Well, you know, we got that whole album produced by DJ Mercy that's coming out in October. Right now, we still got it untitled, but we'll have a title for it in the next couple of weeks. But we just uh, wrapped up a, 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 a left cypher track that's going to be on the on the album with Ace on Eastwood. Uh, we got Lord Fury on there. We got Hilla. And, of course, you got the usual suspects. And, uh, yeah, we got some real gems coming out in October on this album. It's going to be some real heat. And also, man, I got I to ask you guys individually, because, of course, you know, you guys are both artists, man. So I have to ask, how did... Did you guys individually get into the music industry? Like, what actually sparked your amazing careers? Well, okay, well, basically, social media, for me personally, like, my brother brought hip hop home to me. You know what I mean? Like, I remember, like, when he first put on a cash in and all kind of interviews. I remember when he first put on African Bandana, Planet Rock. That thing changed my life. You know what I mean? Because we were West Indian, so, you know, you grew up in a house playing soca. You know what I mean? Blues, country music, reggae, you hear everything, you know what I'm saying? So that's the music you grow up to, but when my brother brought home that fight and rock, that changed my life. I fell in love with it from there. And then I, I, I wrote my first rap when I was about 10 years old in grade four, and I performed it like at talent shows and stuff like that. And uh, after that, like, you know, which is a cool bus, we formed a, a little clip called uh, The Box Dynasty. And uh, we were tearing up Montreal in the early 90s. We're like basically like Canada's Wu Tang. There was like nine of us, and 25 members. It was, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. You know what I mean? So we, we were just like, we just do that thing. And then after, you know, I was uh, from the Boss Fantasy, I went to Shades of Culture, and they put me on a feature called Shine. And that was a real big hit for them in Quebec. And then after that, I got onto a Dogmatic album and uh, got a full plaque from that album. And, um, yeah, from there, after I moved to Toronto, I was doing my thing, you know, all the time, just, you know, doing my thing. And um, in 2008, I met SK, and uh, I was already doing, like, I had a few mixtapes out and stuff like that. Then in 2007. Then in 2007, in fact. And we did our first track in, like, 2008. Mm-hmm. We did the first track in 2007. Back, back, back. Yeah, that's pretty much my, like, how I came to hip-hop, like, you know, me and SK got his story about it too, you know? Yeah, the way I came into Mystic, I was always into hip-hop, stuff where I didn't see, all the people and stuff, and, um, we rap a little tight, just trying to make guys know that they're not on the bad book. And, um, I, I personally and I linked up, and my homie is a, is a hill producer, but, I don't know, I guess he just likes to just fool around with the music, you know? And I linked up with the next time we're doing some music together, and, and that's what really turned out. Then I ended up doing one track. Um, I did a track for a mixtape of mine called We Are Forever Angels Rhyming. And it was, um, track was called Do What I Gotta. And it was on the, um, it was on the um, Renegade beat from JP and Eminem. And I, I got over, I think I got about over, uh, like almost a million views out of it, but, you know, they took it down. Hey, and you know what as well, man, at the end of the day, you still got a, mil- a million views, man, you know, there, there's many, many, many Canadian hip-hop artists, man, that unfortunately can't even get a thousand, let alone a million, man, so whether they took it down or not, man, nobody can ever take away that number from you. That's right, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, most of the Canadian artists, they need to realize my thing, you know, if they've only got a, a thousand views on YouTube, those are a thousand organic views. You know what I mean? They're not bots. It's not bots, right? So a lot of the time, you see these guys, you got like 
20 subscribers, but you got like 11,000 views. How does that work? How does that number make sense? And also as well, guys, as you already know, we got connected through uh, MJ's Hip Hop Connects out there in uh, New Jersey. I was wondering, how did, your, how did you guys actually get connected with MJ? And of course, what is it like having her as a publicist? Because I say this in very, very many interviews when I do bring her up, that she is such a phenomenal publicist, man. I don't even know how she does it. I don't even know if she sleeps at night. MJ's Connect is a beach. That's all I have to say. Uh, we got connected with her through uh, Soul Rat and through DJ Merciless. And, uh, yeah, she's been really putting in some work for us. Uh, besides, before that, I was doing a lot of the, of the, of the footwork. And I still continue to do some footwork. Um, and uh, right now, but she's a beast. Like, we have a beast as a publicist. And we, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a blessing, man. Like, we really, like, a year ago, nobody knew about us, except in America. And now, you know what I mean? Like, the world knows us. You know what I mean? Like, we can't even keep the merch in, 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 in the shop. The merch just runs out. We print t-shirts, they're gone within days. Like, it's crazy. Like, we can't even keep the merch in-house. Like, the stock always run out. It was, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm telling you, like, the machine is working, and we're, and we're so proud to have her on our side. MJ, MJ, she's a beast, man. MJ, you're a beast. Oh, yeah. Shout out at, shout out MJ at Connect, bro. And I got to say, I agree with you guys as well, man. You know what I mean? Like, uh, she's actually one of the radio station sponsors, man. And I say this, man. I don't just say all this because she's a sponsor. I genuinely mean it, man. Like, she is an absolute... I, I, I always say she's like a Terminator, man, because the stuff she does and the amount of work she puts in in one day, I don't know how any human can physically do that. I know, man, that she... She worked 28 hours in 24. <laughs> so, I mean, so I don't know I message. Even when her eyes are closed, she's still working, man. It's amazing, though. And also as well, guys, last year you guys actually released a uh, Usual Suspects Volume 1 record, which I got to say is absolutely phenomenal. And for the people that aren't act that don't actually know about this, head on over to Spotify and check this phenomenal record out. But I got to ask, man, what's the story and creative process behind this phenomenal record? And of course, do you actually offer hard copies of that, of that, of that masterpiece today? Well, uh, do have any hard copies of uh, Volume one anymore, but we have volume two on CD as an actual hard copy. But you can actually go to audiomax.com backslash SK Bobber and download a volume one and two for free on Audio Max. And all and they're all uh, they're all hosted by DJ Merciless. And also, that was actually next on my question list, man. You know what I mean? You guys actually did some phenomenal work with fellow Canadian veteran DJ Merciless, man. I was always wondering, how did yourself and Merciless get connected, man? And of course, what is it like having his production work on your guys' tracks? Uh, I actually hooked up with Merciless about 12 years ago. My cousin, Jenna Bell, she's actually the one who set me up with him. And she's the one who told me that I to go to and I linked up with Merce. And me and Merce, was, we, I was recording some, just like some mixtape joints for a while, and then we had a studio come up on my end that Mark Menegra did, so I kind of just, you know, kept the lawyer and was moving with the man about my end. But then we had a little tragedy in, up there too, so I um, lost one of my best friends. And so I just, gravitated and did my own thing. Me and Soul stayed up. And we started working. I was working with our next one, Me Ward. And um, me and Soul had a good chemistry, so we just kept pushing. And said, Soul said, yo, we put out these two mixtapes. Let's just do our last lap and see what we can get out of it. So that's how we've been working right now. And with Merce, man. Merce is phenomenal, man. We went to Montreal to do Cook That Work video. And after we did the video, Merce said, yo, I want to produce a whole EP from you guys. We're like, okay, pet. And then it just turned into an album. It's going to be released in October. We don't have a name for it yet, though. But working with Merce is great, man. 
And I just want to say as well, man, my sincere condolences to, to yourself, man, pertaining to your friend, man. It's never a good thing when you lose someone close to you. So I just want to extend my condolences pertaining to that. All right, bless, my bless, you know. But I got to say, man, you, your guys' work that you guys actually do with Merciless is just absolutely phenomenal, man. So I'm really excited to actually hear what you guys have in store next. Oh, uh, we got this next point coming out. It's crazy, man. It's actually called Calling Out Your Name. That's going to be the next single coming out. Yeah, that video is like a movie, man. It's going to be phenomenal. Hopefully it'll come out mid-August, end of August. Hopefully we can drop the track in the next two weeks. And when we go sit down with Merciless, we'll figure out what we're going to be doing. And also as well, guys, February 11th of 2020, you guys actually dropped my personal favorite track by you guys. And it's actually titled Put In That Work. I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about that phenomenal song. And of course, what actually uh, what actually is the inspiration behind it, man? Because I, I love that joint. Well, Put In That Work was, um, was a track that was supposed to go to Capone and Noriega from, from, from DJ Mercer. And... Uh, the tragedy Gaddafi and and, and, uh, and Capone, they had their verses on there, but um, only because of doing drink champs or whatever, like, wasn't available, so Merce ended up saying, you know what, I'm going to take these guys off the beat, and, you know, we were already finished volume, volume two at that point, so we're like, we're, we're, we're mining for beats, we're beat mining, we're producers, so we're going out purchasing beats, you know what I mean, just to get the vibe. He, he, he put on putting that work, and me and MK just gravitated to it. You know what I mean? We pretty much said, all right, Merce, let's, let's do this. And um, we ended up putting on doing, doing the track. We went to Montreal to film the video, and during the trip to Montreal, the way going down, me, me and SK, you know, we still sold for brothers, but we really, really dig our soul music, right? You know what I mean? So we drive him, and, 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 and Merce in the back, and, um, you know, we get to Kingston, and he's like, he's like, no, this is this only kind of music you guys like listen to? Like, no, nah, but not, we can do a lot of this, like, you know, we bought for a lot of stuff. And he's like, now I know why you guys fuck with my beat so heavy, you know what I'm saying? Excuse my language. And, um, and so after, like, you know, we get to Montreal, as soon as we get to Montreal, we start filming the video. So we end up doing a lot of work. And as you said, as Kate said, after coming on the way back, that's when when Mars seen our work ethic and he's like, you know what? We go chop an EP, and it's gonna be all produced by me. And the funniest thing is, I said to SK before we went on this trip to one job, like, yo, maybe Mars is gonna wanna work with us, like because the vibe, like you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just all ended up just like Mars coming together, like you know what I mean? We came back and it's like I was, I, was, I don't know if I was more happy with the visual. Or half for, for, for Mercy and yo, you gonna take us on? Right. I think it was the link. Yeah, I think it was the link. And now, you know, now we're Supreme Team Record members. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're on the label. Like, you know what I mean? Like, shout out to Mercy, this man, for, for, for seeing for seeing us for who we are. And you know, I think Mercy's real thing with us is that we're a duo, and there's no duos left. And going back as well, when you guys actually said when you actually arrived in Kingston, man, like, was that the only time you guys had the opportunity to actually visit Kingston? Or have you guys been there, like, a few other times as well? Because that's right around my neck of the woods. Uh, so this is from Montreal. So we were actually going to Montreal. So we stopped up in Kingston just to go to the gas station and stuff, right? <laughs> and um, that's when, like, this was like, okay, this is what these guys are really into. You know what I mean? So it worked out, like, to be honest with you, it was a good look. It's really a good look at everything for the video and the whole vibe. Because if the vibe wasn't right, we wouldn't be putting out a whole album to do so by a teaching mercy. And also as well, guys, like like you mentioned earlier on in the interview, that you actually have Usual Suspects merchandise available, man. And I and I know you said like you you, you don't even get it, get the opportunity to keep it. You know, the moment you get it, it's gone. But w what different types of products can you get? And of course, how can our listeners actually order or pre-order some merch today? Yeah, so what they gotta do is really hit me up at Vision SK at Instagram. They can DM me and um. 
if they want to, they can e-transfer the money to Bob, to um, skbomber at gmail.com or they can send it to usual suspects, 75 at gmail.com and we'll get back to it. You know, right now we got t-shirts, we have two, um, I'm looking at, and we have masks, I'm also looking, we have lighters too, I'm also looking to get um, some more hats, long teams, some hoodies, but a lot of this stuff is just going to be exclusive, you know, so, like, put it this way, I'm going to put something out, and then the only way it's coming back is only going to be coming back by request. And also as well, you guys actually had the opportunity to perform on festival stages. And I was wondering, what what festivals did you guys actually have the opportunity to, to partake in? And of course, with Canada, well, Ontario, I should say, going into stage three, if any promoters actually want to book you both, how can they go about doing that? All right, so for me personally, um, I was uh, I was, uh, I was performing with uh, Don Mackey. I did uh, Franco Police, which is, as you know, is like the jazz festival, which is the hugest festival for the summertime in Montreal. So that was about 60,000 people. Uh, then we did uh, Wyclef out in St. John de Richard Year, out in, um, again in Quebec, and that was another 40,000. Then uh, we had the Shape the Culture reunion in Montreal. Uh, that was making another four or 5,000 people out there. So, yeah, it was like, you know, like for me personally, I, I touched the, the bigger stages. Uh, I was trying to get my PNC to come out with me, but we uh, weren't able to, to attend at both times due to certain obligations we already had committed to. But um, yeah, we're ready for the stage in all aspects. You know, we bring all the five elements to hip hop. You know, we make some break dancing. You know, we may hear some DJs cutting up. You know, we're going to bring the MCs. We're going to bring the graffiti artists. We're going to bring it all back. You know what I mean? Like, we bring back the and and bring this hip hop scene back. Because right now, I feel like everybody's on drugs. And you need to come back and just mellow out and get off the drugs and get back to making real music. Real music. Because this form of music that we create is really the heartbeat of hip hop. You gotta try to be timeless with your music. You can't just take it as a hustle because it's never going to last. And also as well, guys, directly after this interview, I actually have one of your one of your songs locked and loaded, and it's actually titled Weak and Thug, man. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a little bit more about this phenomenal joint. That way, if they haven't heard it, what can they expect from it here on 97.7 FM after this interview? Uh, it's a fire. Yeah, you get, you get, you get, you get like a real joint, man, like... The story behind me, Ken Thug, too, is crazy, too, you know, because me and Sosa, we actually, we actually were recording a track called PSA for our mixtape. Basically, like, our last, our last joint we were put on the mixtape, and, and at the end of the day, it was like, yo, we're out and we're just vibing. And so put on the beat, it was like, it was like, um, it's really SOS then. Right? And he said, so everybody, when we finish the joint, nobody wanted to say they get production credits for it. Because Camelot them used it too. But they never put it out. They just left it on the mixtape. So we said, nah, we're going to remix it. And when we went to do the video, we didn't hear the remix version until the day we got it in the studio. And we're about to do the video. Weekend Thug is pretty much get the epitome of how we feel about most of people who are just kind of like playing that big persona, you know what I mean? Just be who you are, you know what I mean? Like regardless, if, you know what I mean? If you're a nine to five dude, you're going to school or whatever, you don't need, you know, like blink, glorify no type of street life. It's not nothing to be glorified about. People lose their life, pay years in prison, lose their families, lose their children over this game here. You know what I mean? So I'm really glorifying any of that. But we got to still, you know, put notice and put people on notice who's out here just funny. You know what I mean? Like, funny. Like, you know, wear a designer shirt and drive and drive a Mercedes Benz and have a Rolex on. Or you live with your mom. Or you don't live nowhere. Or you don't live nowhere. And you don't even take care of your kids. But yet you're on the ground every day. 
That ain't right. So that's what we can't talk. You know what I mean? Or you take your whole paycheck and go to the bar to buy a bottle of champagne to throw off on a girl, and your kids at home, like, waiting for you to bring home your house money, and you out there doing stupidness with it. That's a weekend stuff. I think my verse really set the pace for that one. When, what what Sos is saying, you know? And when I tell them, I say, weekend stuff, plus weekend slugs, the weekday bugs, some cartoon drugs. At Harden Club, bottle popping while the baby new diapers. We are wasting that life, you know? So, I, I would like to my bar, but I don't just give it that. So I know people are going to get up in a cry, they're going to act like those things, but no, no time to be squirrely, man. You take, take the truth for what it is. If you can't have it, sorry, man. Switch up your life, man. Get your act together, man. No weekend stuff. Keep it real. And I gotta ask you both, man, what is next for Canada's own usual suspects, man? Is there anything we happen to miss? Anything else you guys still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still have you here live on the 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM airwaves this evening. Well, I'm gonna tell them right now, make sure before the album comes out, you go ahead and go to audiomax.com backslash SA Bomber to get volume one and volume two, which are free downloads. You'll also hear a couple of little single joints out there for our, our first joint we ever did. It's called 15 Cent. It's on there. And that's when me and MK came together as, 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 as two rhyme pillars to make this building that we have right now the home of the usual suspect. So, like, go ahead and check that out. Our next single's coming out in about the next month or so, you know what I mean? So it'll be available on Spotify and everything. You know what I mean? We'll have we'll have a second month. Yeah. We'll have like um we'll have like a, a release date for that shortly on IG. And uh, the video should be out by late August, which is gonna be a movie. This is this is probably uh, I co directed this with Merce. Oh yeah. This is gonna be a movie. This is my first direct director debut. Calling out your name, big You know what I mean? So it's like it's a real movie, and I, and I hope I hope that the world really takes this video in because this is like remember it's to be continued. Merchandise that year for the next single after, but we haven't had this. We don't have the title yet, but we got a next one coming right after it. Got the merch out there, so you can DM Usual Suspect, DM Bombish and FK, and uh, like I said, like we'll get your size, whatever, we'll deliver. You know what I mean? Kind of the post worldwide, we'll get it out to you. You know what I mean? But we want to shout out Outlaw Radio FM. You know, you're going to have us out here. want to shout out MKS Connects. So you guys been putting us in rotation. You know what I mean? They're spinning our tunes. And the world's hearing us right now. And without y'all, we wouldn't be who we are right now. You know what I mean? We want to say thank you to y'all first and foremost. And I, I just got to say, first and foremost, guys, thank you so much for just taking the time out of your busy evening and sliding into the 97.7 air, airwaves, man. Like I said, I've really been enjoying your guys' music and what you guys bring to the table hip-hop-wise, man. So if if yourself or MJ keeps sending the tracks, you already know we here in Prescott, we're going to keep spinning it. Bop, bop, bop. Make sure as soon as you guys get some shows out there, all that up, man. ready to come out there and rock the mic. Hey, man, most definitely. I I'm ready to see you guys do it, man. With this COVID crap going on, man, I'm not going to lie to you. It's getting to the point where I'm starting to feel like, I'm starting to forget what a concert feels like, and that's not good, especially for a DJ, man. Uh, <laughs> man, man, man. We're out of the element right now, man. You better rock out of the crowd right get out there. That's what it is, too, right? Oh, man, I most definitely agree, guys. But we're almost there, man. We're almost there, thank God. And hopefully there's no more, there's not another wave and we can keep going through these steps and getting back to normal. No doubt, man. No doubt. But most definitely, guys, you guys have yourselves a wonderful night out there in the GTA, man. And we most definitely shall talk soon, guys. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Don't forget, keep playing that weekend stuff. You don't forget, you're on Spotify and all the platforms, man. Go ahead and stream on music. And tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. We have Facebook too. At East Coast Suspects. You know, we have Audio Mac on SoundCloud at East Coast Suspects. And check us out, man. Check us out. We're working. Most definitely, man. Most definitely. Ain't nowhere, ain't nowhere up but here for Usual Suspects, guys. Thank you so much.